Well, he's so challenging to the audience, which people have forgotten that was always a big point of of this, not just to entertain the audience, yeah, yeah. but to sometimes make you sit there and go, I don't think I agree with this at all. Yeah. And then that's the start. Yeah, there point. was a funny thing that happened in the, you know, the play was, um, the play was an hour and a half. And, and when we <clears throat> first went into dress rehearsals and previews, we tried it without an intermission. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the, for the duration of the play, my character was on stage and I pulled David aside after we did the first dress rehearsal, uh, where we did have an intermission. And I, I mean, where we didn't have an intermission. And I pulled him aside and I said, besides the fact that I need a chance to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. at some point during the course of the play, uh, if we're going to, if we're going to have a long run, there's definitely going to be a time where I will need to go to the bathroom uh, at some point during this hour and a half. And as I said, my character never left the stage. Um, but besides that, I said, there was a natural place in the play for a break. Um, and I said, and it was a very, it ended, it, it ended the scene in a very provocative note. And I said, David, you should send people out into the, out into the hall, out of the lobby to argue. Sure. And, yeah. and that's only going to serve your, your last act. Is if you <laughs> is if you allow them to go out in the lobby and argue a little bit. Yeah, because it's always body punches. It's yeah, just gut, just, you're like I'm not. Uh, but <laughs> that that's the beauty of that. I mean, that used to be uh, the reason people went out to theater. Yeah. you know, was to maybe get their main uh, their mind changed well or or, 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 or the, you know, the it was the reason it was actually more than the reason to go out to theater the re, it was the reason to go out to dinner after the theater right was so that you could talk, talk and disagree and have yeah. a little discourse about what the hell you just seen you know but and, and so many times let's say with film we've gotten away from that i mean there's always a couple of, of films a year that you can go out afterwards and and wrestle a i think bit. that i think that lives in smaller independent films now. Yeah. I think that the to a great degree um larger studio pictures are um a spectacle. Mm -hmm. And which there's a grand tradition of, of, you know, and 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 I think that there's it's a very important place within that sort of within film culture. But um you know, studios were making um, you know, Taxi Driver was made by a studio years sure. ago. <laughs> and, yeah. And, uh, and those films, I think, live in the independent world. And therefore, they're, you've got to find them. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think some of that material also lives on television now. It certainly does, doesn't it? It's very yeah. strange that that happened because we used to call it the boob tube, you know, yeah. when we were kids, yeah. because you were just supposed to sit and zone out. Yeah. But now there's been so many uh, series that if you don't see it, you miss out. Yeah, I mean, but that's a matter of programming. I mean, there's yeah. just so much programming now. Yeah. You know, I think cable chain satellite changed all of that because it allowed for so much more programming that it 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 couldn't help but elevate um only because um competition was fierce so now the networks uh one that you work for go look if we're going to compete back against we've got to bring yeah and, and i think this. that's a reason why the our show is and it's one of the things i like most about our show and i think the audience has proven to it's been proven out now that the the audience is responding to this that this is as compelling as anything about our show is that is it really is two parallel television forms and two parallel stories and that you do have the sort of standalone procedural aspect of the show on a weekly basis but ultimately that serves a greater mythology and that serves a greater story that mm. is that is serialized and um and I think that uh, sort of amalgamation is, um, has served us very well. Well, I think that's one of the things people like about Red, because he is uh, he's an entrepreneur, more or less, in a corporate world. You know what I mean? He is a, a, a wild man who doesn't back down from these ridiculous odds that he takes on. I have not yet faced a threshold that he was unwilling to cross. And he loves it. He, he loves does. being in that yeah. dangerous 
I think situation. He's, yeah, I think he. I think he's intrigued by the unknown. Yeah. But if you think he went to like Annapolis as a kid, so at some point he must have been super patriotic and something happened the more or less. I don't know whether it's a matter of patriotism. I think it's a matter of, um, first of all, I think is the prism through which he sees the world is unique to him. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but that may also be because he's experienced so much of the world firsthand. Um, and I think that there, it's one of the things that we, it's one of the problems that we face culturally in, on an international basis is that people tend to view the world through the prism of their own culture without a real understanding for a foreign culture. And he has lived his life, the majority of his life, um, moving from place to place and having to embed himself in that cult, those different cultures. And so I think he sees the world in a very different way. I think he also, um, I think when you, when you live your life, um, in the extremes, which he often does, it gives you a very different perspective about life itself, not only your own life, but the lives of others. Um, and it, gives him at least a real understanding for the value of life and the cost Mm -hmm. thereof when, for instance, when one's life is taken. Um, But, uh, you know, I, he, he's definitely, I don't know whether he's an entrepreneur or whether he's, he certainly works freelance. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's sure. But, you know, I was thinking, I just saw this um, documentary that Rory Kennedy did called The Last Days of Saigon. And yes, I'm dying to see that. It was fantastic. And yeah, it, it, I just, it, I read an article in the Times yeah. about it a couple of weeks ago. It reminded me of your character because these CIA guys that were just supposed to pull out looked around at people, you know, uh, that they had seen there over the years. And they just said, even though these are our orders, fuck it. I'm, I'm taking these folks yeah, with we me. Gotta come, they got to come. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the weird thing about what people will do is once you're on the ground, you know, yeah. orders change yes, a little bit. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's Certainly back- your understanding yeah. of any incident or crisis or any or even just a place, your understanding of that is is so changed once you're in it. Um, and I think Red is willing, the character I play, Reddington, is, is willing to, um, he's willing to step off the plane anywhere. Sure. Uh, tonight, uh, it's back on Blacklist, 10 o'clock in the season premiere. Go to NBC.com for more information. James Spader, thank you so much. Thank you. For stopping by, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Coming thank through. you very much. Um, you know, some of the ladies that we know have contacted me about the uh, James Spader. They like the James Spader. They like the way he looks, and they're interested in him sexually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you know that he was a sex symbol? I didn't know he was a sex symbol. I I wasn't aware of that. No. I thought that he would be frightening to them. (laughs) I thought they would be afraid of him.